And when you were a young actor, the fact that you were an indigenous guy, did, that, did you sense that you were being kept to the kind of outside of mainstream stuff? Because you like Jimmy Stewart and you love, um, what's his name, Spencer Tracy, you know, the two white guys. Yeah, I was, I was, I was not involved in, in mainstream productions as, you know, just, just play, this, play this role, we want you to play this role. And producers would say things, you know, I can't see an Indian being that. And I said, well, goodness gracious, why not? <laughs> and they said, I'm not Indian, I'm North American. <clears throat> I could tell you what we call ourselves, but you wouldn't be able to pronounce it. And the, oh, yeah. There was a movie, I think it was Hunt for Red October, no, they are the Crimson Tide. It was, they called me to fly down to New York to meet the director. And there's all these kids sitting out there who were auditioning for the role and they've got their scripts going. They're acting away in the, in, the, in the room and I'm looking around and we're laughing at them. And they called me and I sat down, it was Tony Scott, and uh, we talked for about 10 or 15 minutes about this and that and the other things. He says, you know, I can't really see a Native American working on a submarine. And I said, well, if you could, I would let you tell my four dead uncles who died in the Pacific on subs. Thanks for the trip to New York. I'm going to Sardi's for lunch now. Too shit, man. Well and I done. got up and left. And they got this guy who played the uh, chief of the boat who was just like a hole on the screen. He was blank. I mean, he's probably a good actor, but he just didn't belong but, in that role. But again, I'm, I'm struck by your, not unanimity, your sanguineness how that would have angered so, maybe it did make you angry, but how it would have put some actors off base, that kind of a front, and yet you seem to accommodate that and then just keep rolling on. How do you do that? Just let it go. If you drag stuff around, if you let people live in your head, they're doing it for rent free. Just let them go. This is their thinking, this is where they're going. I'm not going that way. I'm not, not, not gonna chase you around and try to get that, oh, Mr. Scott, I really need this role. Uh, yeah, I'll with you. Go on. Uh, for the record, I really liked uh, your impression of how those guys were preparing in the audition room. I thought that was good acting. All your sit still and listen stuff, I don't really yeah, care about it, but all this kind of stuff I really liked. Oh, I don't know, they do that. And uh, if you're driving along the, the street, my wife said, look at those guys, and I said, Oh, they're heading to an audition. <laughs> Beep! You know, somebody behind them, the green light, and they take off. <laughs> because they're terrified. They're terrified. They don't have a lot of work. Yeah. You know, they're desperate to get the job. They don't know how, they don't know why they're not getting it. You because know, they're, they're keyed up and they're trying too goddamn hard. It's something that if you really work too hard at something, you could, I don't know, you just loosen up a little bit. They say stay loose when you fall, you won't break anything. That's basically being an actor, stay loose. Things happen, things happen. If they don't, well, don't let it get to you. Just go move on, do something else. Go home, read a book, yeah. write your own script.